and even though he did get his kick away, there was no roughing the kicker because the defensive man who came in there had no way of knowing what he was going to end up doing. And that was Matt McKee. All right, first and 10 Cavaliers, the ball at their own 27 yard line. As McNeese, this is going to be an airline battle. Ball knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Keith Kirkhoff. As McNeese tried to drill one, Kirkhoff just reached up high into the air and batted her down. All right, second and 10 situation. For the Cavaliers, they weren't supposed to pass the football. Oh my. So the Beaver defense now hoping to thwart them here if they can. Coming wide to the right is Al Giambroni. George goes wide left as McNeese sets him down once again. He gives on a quick pitch out on the far side to Aslan trying to get outside. Good defensive play over there by the Beavers. Brad Jones and John Rosebud. But he might have got enough for the first down. We'll have to wait and see where they say he went out of bounds. Gary Kansky uh, pulling and leading the way for Aslan. Short by about a yard. Third and one now for the Cavaliers. That mascot out there uh, for the Beavers. Uh, he's staying warm anyway. Right, McNeese sets it down once more. Third and one situation. Pitches again on the far side to Haslam. Run out of bounds on the far side of the field by Rosebud, but not until he picked up the first down yardage. Bring the ball in from the far sideline and let's see where they'll spot it. At the 41 yard line of the Cavaliers, first and 10. So now the pattern for the Cavaliers appears to be, let's start to go wide with our speed merchant and see what happens. But maybe they're setting something up too. GM Brony wide right, George wide left. He has them directly behind the, the snap. And the handoff, nobody could even get a handoff. A flag in the air on the far side of the field. We'll have to wait and see. Tony. Okay, for the Beavers on this one, free safety Jim Cox is coming in here to rush. In the middle of the defensive line, Gary Schmidt and Rich Bazzini. For the Cavaliers. That mascot out there uh, for the Beavers. Uh, he's staying warm anyway. All right, McNeese sets it down once more. Third and one situation. Pitches again on the far side to Haslam. Run out of bounds on the far side of the field by Rosebud, but not until he picked up the first down yardage. Bring the ball in from the far sideline and let's see where they'll spot it. At the 41 yard line of the Cavaliers, first and 10. So now the pattern for the Cavaliers appears to be, let's start to go wide with our speed merchant and see what happens. But maybe they're setting something up too. Jim Brony wide right, George wide left. He has them directly behind the the snap. And the handoff, nobody could even get a handoff. A flag in the air on the far side of the field. We'll have to wait and see. Tony. Okay, for the Beavers on this one, free safety Jim Cox is coming in here to rush. In the middle of the defensive line, Gary Schmidt and Rich Bazinius just crashed through that time and made the play, but the penalty might decline it. The referee talking with Don Brusca, the offensive captain for the Cavaliers. We'll see what it is as they step off five yards. Offside the penalty against the Beavers. So it will be first and five now. From about the 46 yard line of the Cavaliers. They trail in the ball game 17 14. Jambroni wide left, George wide right. McNeese is Jim Cox. Keith Strive had a shot at him and couldn't quite get there in time. Okay, the Cavaliers are starting to go outside a little bit no more now in the third quarter, and this is just a, a simple handoff, and it's up to Brown to get outside. He does a good job of it. And free safety Jim Cox makes a good hit right at the sidelines. First and 10 Cavaliers, the ball now resting on the 43-yard line of the Beavers. As McNeese once again comes up and sets them down. 
He has Flax and Halsam back there with him. Here's the straight ahead shot to Flax, and he gets racked up in there pretty good by Bessenius and Schmidt in the middle there. Pick up of, uh, let's see, maybe two when they mark it down at the 41-yard line. Make it second and eight for St. Mary up the plane. We've got nine minutes, 45 seconds to go here in this third period. With Black, directly behind him. Turns, he gives a head to him, and he uh, comes forward, and Jim Cox finally brings the man down. Picks up about four more. It'll make it a third and four situation. The ball on the 37-yard line of Buena Vista. As their defense has to dig in. As their defense has to dig in. Beaver cause as he couldn't find the handle on it and had to fall on it so now coach Matt May uh, indicates he's going to send his kicker Ferguson into the lineup and try in all probability come up with a coffin corner kick and put the Beavers deep in their own territory as John Rosebud and Jeff Trost drop back for the Beavers Matt May uh, a little unhappy about the change of ants right there as now Ferguson drops back to about his own 45-yard line. You get his kick away from about the midfield strike. Will the rush be on? Let's wait and see. Snap. A good one. Two-man rush. He gets his kick away. High spiral. And Rosebud taking no fair catch signal and is nailed immediately. John Rosebud hit at about the six-yard line. But I do believe we've got a flag down on the field. We'll have to wait and see. Offside, St. Mary. So, they'll probably make them bring it back and do it all over again. Offside Cavaliers, so uh, they'll move back five yards and have to do her once again. So really a pretty good break for the Beavers. I don't believe they're going to want to take the ball at their own five-yard line. They're going to want to try and uh, see if they can't pick up some yardage on that exchange. We'll have to wait and see. They're talking things over. Offside St. Mary's declined. Offside St. Mary's declined. The Beavers will take over at their own five yard line. Well, they got a long way to go. I guess they feel, uh, what's that old legal saying? Possession is nine tenths of the law or some such thing. Who knows? Well, Coach Hirschberger sure isn't happy about it. So, the Beavers. I believe you might have to say there was a little bit of a mix-up in things there. And they'll take over first and ten from their own five-yard line as Knudsen brings them out. He gives ahead to Caver straight ahead, and he's got about eight big yards. Jim Caver running real hard, picks up eight mighty precious yards. Okay. Okay, here's the Beavers deep in their own territory, and Caver just eight yards, just about on his own. Good run by the fullback there. Second and two now for the Beavers as they want to try and grind it out. There might be a little psychological warfare going on here now. If they can drive the length of the field. All right, Knudsen again down with it. He gives again to Caper. He's got a big hole running hard. And comes all the way up to the 25-yard line before he's finally stopped in there by Matt McKee. But he picks up the almighty first down. They, two big runs back-to-back -back by Caper. Get the Beavers out of the hole. 20 yards on the two carries. All right, turn in for Syro now for Buena Vista. And Roy Brown comes in on defense for the Cavaliers. Newton setting him down. Oh, gives the Caper with nowhere to go this time. They hog tie him this time. McDaniel, Schmidt, and Van Dyke decide, hey, you're getting too much, baby. In for Syro now for Buena Vista. And Roy Brown comes in on defense for the Cavaliers. Newton setting him down. Cole gives the Caper with nowhere to go this time. They hog tie him this time. McDaniel, Schmidt, and Van Dyke decide, hey, you're getting too much, baby. No more. 
John Moses coming out of the middle of that Cavalier line. Steve Trost replacing Jim Brune in the Beaver line. So we've got a second and nine situation now. Here's the fake by Knudsen. Pitches out on the far side to Trost. Runs wide right. Goes out of bounds at about the Jeff Trost that time on the carry on the pitch from Knudsen. Picks up about six yards as he's run out of bounds on the far side of the field at about the 30. We'll have to wait and see where they spot it. 32-yard line. The third and a long three for the Beavers. Consuming a lot of time on this drive. Of course, that's uh, what they like to do when they've got the lead. Here's Knudsen again on the rollout. He rolls out right, cuts back in, and I believe he got enough for the first down. Over there, Pat George and Chuck Ferguson to make the stop for him, but I do believe he picked up enough yardage to get the first down, and he did. Across to about the 36-yard line that time. First and 10, Buena Vista. All right, turn comes back into the lineup for the Beavers. Replacing Cyro. Roy Brown, who is the second most explosive back of the Cavaliers, has been playing a lot of games today for them. All right, here's Judas faking off the handoff. Drops back. He looks. He throws long. And the ball knocked away nicely by Pat George, number 32. The intended receiver, Steve Trost. He had the defenders beat, but Pat George went high in the air to knock the ball away. Okay, this is Knutson going for six points on this one. He drops back. He's got plenty of time. Steve Trost seems to have his man beat, but it's good pass coverage there. Almost an interception by either of the two defensive ball players. All right, Syro back into the Beaver lineup now for turn. Second and 10 for the Beavers from their own 36-yard line. They lead in the ball game, 17 to 14. In the third period, here's the pass right over the middle. And all by his close is Steve Trost. And he's got another first down across the midfield stripe into Cavalier territory at the 48-yard line. Harold Edwards making the stop. Okay, that's Steve Trost again. The junior split in. He's, he's lining up, and he's just coming down the middle about a 15-yard curl-in pattern. And he's wide open, and Knutson puts the ball right in his chest. All right, Jim Brune replaces Trost in that Beaver lineup now. He goes wide right, Cyro is wide left for the Beaver. Then. Sets him down. As he drops back again. The rush is on. The screen on the far side to Kafer, the big worker in that second quarter. Kafer still running, cutting to this side of the field, still coming back, looking, looking, and finally hogtied in there by Mark Van Dyke. But Jim Kafer on the screen pass makes it first and 10 Beavers at the 30-yard line of the Cavaliers. Okay, this is that screen pass again. It's been working all day. The pass is easy. There's Kafer, and those offensive linemen are do just doing a great job. Sonny Riesland's making some great blocks. Dan Phillips is getting downfield, the both offensive guards, and Jeff Arp, the center. Great downfield blocking for Kafer, and he's tough to bring down in any field. All right, Brune wide to the right. Brune wide to the left. Here's the handoff to Kafer, right up the middle. Cut, picks up five hard yards, maybe four, make it short for Chuck Ferguson of the Cavaliers making the stop. And Jim Kafer has been the workhorse of this Beaver attack today, make no mistake about that. All right, Steve Trost coming back into the Beaver lineup in place of Jim Brune. It'll be second and about six, the ball on the 26-yard line of the Cavaliers. The Beaver offensive line seems to take a little bit of control here now, too. Here's Knudsen rolling out to his right. He's looking. He throws over the middle. A nice attempt in there by Steve Trost. He fell down as he made his cut, leaned up and tried to catch the ball, couldn't hold on, and... Matt McKee was back okay. there. On this play, a pass play, Jim Kafer doesn't get the ball, but look at this job of blocking. That's another valuable asset for Jim Kafer, and he can do just about anything on the field. Block, run, catch the ball. All right, Cyro replacing turn in the Beaver lineup. As we've got a third and six situation now, the ball on the 26-yard line of the Cavaliers. <laughs> Knudsen rolls back, the rush on, throws over the middle. Ball just a little bit overthrown for Syro. He couldn't quite get up there. Knudsen lost his footing, and he got racked in there pretty good, and he's getting up awful slow off the ground. 
Let's see if we can catch who that was. That uh, that was Van Dyke that had the rush on, and Knutson is limping off the far side of the field as timeout is taken on the field to let him get off of there. And Mike Cooper, I do believe, is going to come into the ball game for the Beavers up Buena Vista as Knutson heads over to the bench to get some help. So the referee says, let's get her going, and Cooper comes into the ball game with a fourth and sixth situation now for the Beavers. The ball at the 26-yard line of the Cavaliers. They're evidently hold it now, finally calling timeout. The Beavers of Buena Vista decide they want to talk things over. We'll okay, there's Knutson on the sideline. Looks like he might have hurt his ankle or maybe a knee. He's limping. Steve Knutson over there trying to walk it off and uh, appears to be an ankle really. He's stepping kind of gingerly on that foot. But, uh, hasn't asked anybody to give him some tape or anything. He just kind of wants to walk it off and uh, get the kinks out a little bit. He slipped as he was coming back on that pass play. And about the time he straightened up and let go of the ball, big Mark Van Dyke, a six foot two, 245 pound senior out of Atchison, Kansas, put the shillelagh to him. Coach Hirschberger and Mike Cooper talking things over as we come up with a fourth and sixth situation. The ball at the 26 yard line of the Cavaliers. Here's Matt May with his team, uh, hoping his defense can stop whatever the Beavers are going to try on this fourth and sixth situation. We've got 4.58 left to go in the third period. Buena Vista 17, St. Mary 14. So Cooper breaks them out now. His first appearance in the ball game. He's got Kafer directly behind him. Throws behind him as he goes wide. He pitches out here to Crows. Crows cuts back in. He's not going to get there. He stopped at about the 25-yard line. Over there, Steve Schmidt, Craig McDaniel, and John Moses to make the stop for the Cavaliers as they will take over first and 10. The ball just over their own 25-yard line. So now the Beaver defense once again will get a chance to see what they can do as Mike McNeese will be the quarterback for the Cavaliers, and he is the throwing quarterback. GM Brony wide to the right, George wide to the left. Here's the handoff to Haslam coming wide. He's got no blockers, and the Beavers hog tie him as he gets just up to about the 26-yard line. Max Struby over there to put the final crunch on, along with some help from Keith Stride. Also uh, trying to catch up and having a hard time is Dennis Rouse. So actually, they lost about a yard on the play. It'll be second and 11. The ball just over the 25-yard line. Ken McNeese sets him down. He turns, he has the hazard coming straight through, and uh, he just got back to the line of scrimmage as Max Struby again in there to make the stop, along with uh, Rich Pesenius. So it'll be a third and, uh, say, ten and a half. Will they put it in the air deep in their own territory? Gambroni wide right, George wide left. McNeese is going to put it up. He does, and the ball is dropped. Intended for George. Right on top of him is Brad Jones of the Beavers. And okay, this is a, a quick pass by Monique's out there to, to George. Split in, just does a little slant in, and there's just dropped the ball. It was there. Brad Jones giving him a lot of trouble. And strange as it may seem, uh, if Jones's hands would have been six inches lower, he might have had the ball end up there. All right, That's fourth right. down as Ferguson drops back to punt for the Cavaliers. Gets the ball away, the rush on. Short kick, rolling on the far side of the field, and they're going to let it roll, and it looks like it'll go out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. There is a flag on the play. We'll have to wait and see. Did they move? Offside, Buena Vista. So, they'll come back and do it over again, I do believe, or maybe they'll decline the penalty and let the Beavers take the ball at their own 45-yard line. We'll have to wait and see whether they want to do that or uh, let them start out from there. They had the big rush on, but 
one man uh, got in there just a little bit too soon. Ruska talking with the referee to see what they want to do. Do they want to try and kick it again? Offsides Buena Vista. They're going to bring it back and try it again. So they'll come up with a fourth and sixth situation. I'm sure they'll be kicking it away again as Rosebud and Trost, Jeff Trost, will be back for the Beavers. AU 42, Missouri 14, late in the fourth quarter, and Mr. Cromwell must be having himself a day. Looks like Kansas is headed for the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. All right, Ferguson back again to kick. We'll get it away from about his own 20-yard line. The snap good. The rush on. Gets her away. Rosebud at the far side of the field. Has to let the ball go. It's taking a Cavalier bounce and will roll out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. So they did gain on the penalty. So the Beavers will take over a 15-yard gain, in fact, for the Cavaliers on that uh, second punt. First down and 10. First and 10, Buena Vista. Mike Cooper in, still in there at quarterback for the Beavers. We've got 2.45 left to go in the third period. Third split wide left, Zyra wide right. Cooper gets off the paper. Paper running hard, still running hard, driving hard. Gets about five yards. As Arp and Riesland and Schumacher gave him some running room that time. And they say uh, about four and a half yards make it. Rune replacing Steve Trost in the Beaver lineup with a play from the bench. We haven't had a chance to check on Steve Knutson to see what the injury was. We hope he gets some word on that. As Cooper sets it down again, Cooper holds, takes, he keeps the ball and gets upset on a nice defensive play in there. Mike Cooper looked like he wanted to hand off and didn't have a chance to do so as Steve Schmidt upended him there. Got, uh, if anything, the length of the football. So it'll be a third down and six as Turn comes back into the Beaver lineup, replacing Syro. Third and six situation now for the Beavers. They lead by three, 17 to 14, with one minute, 36 seconds to go in the third period. Cooper holds, makes Gaver, still holding, keeps it, and he's gone nowhere. He gets racked up real good, so it'll bring up a fourth down situation, and Fitch will come into the Beaver lineup to see what he can do about uh, putting the Cavaliers deep down as Pat George will drop back into a single safety. And now coming back to help him out is Chuck Ferguson. As Fitch, standing on about his own 19-yard line, will get the kick away from about the 23. Waiting for the snap. Gets a good snap from center. As the ball kicks it. An end over end kick coming to the near side of the field. Rolling, taking a beaver bounce. Chasing it down. Down there is George. And right on top of the ball as it goes out of bounds is John Guest, number 30 for the Beavers. So had Mr. George tried to field the ball, he might have had a very uh, unruly greeting there. So it'll be first and 10 for the Cavaliers from their own 30-yard line with now 47 seconds left to go in the third quarter of action. Well, they finally spotted the ball at about the 28-yard line. No, correction, make that the 23-yard line. We'll get it straight, stick with us. First and 10, Cavaliers. McNeese gives straight ahead to Flax. He shuns off a couple of tackers and picks up two yards. Gary Schmidt and Keith Kirkhoff finally making the stop on him for the Beavers. Okay, this is the fullback in there. He's hit right at the line by Gary Schmidt. Good second effort, and there's Keith Kirkhoff to bring him down. Good second effort there by the fullback. Right, Pat George replaces Tom Brom at split end for the Cavaliers, and he goes wide left as GM Roney comes wide right as McNeese sets him down on a second and eight situation. He pitches on the far side, going way wide. It has him. He's got the on him. And finally gets run out of bounds at about the 35-yard line by John Rosebud, but not until he picks up a Cavalier first down. Okay, the Cavaliers just really trying to get outside with the speed in the running in the backfield. And here, it's a good play by Rosebud. He fights off the block, runs him out of bounds. They're really trying to get outside now because that speed can put a quick six on the board. First and 10 for the Cavaliers at their own 36-yard line. Gary Kansky leading the way for Hazel on that last run. 
as time may run out before they get the playoff here in the third quarter. We'll wait and see. No, snap to center, and dropping back is McNeese. He's throwing long downfield, and the ball dropped. Rosebud was right with the man. I believe it was Pat George over there. Rosebud stepped for step with him, but the ball was thrown behind him over the wrong shoulder, and he couldn't see it. So we've got two seconds left now in the third quarter. Second and ten for the Cavaliers from their own 36-yard line. And McNeese, uh, for a ball club that doesn't pass so much, can put something on that big skip. Flax. Flax gets up over the 40-yard line before he's finally stopped in there by Dennis Fay for the Beavers as the third quarter comes to an end. With our score, the Beavers of Buena Vista 17 and the Cavaliers of St. Mary of the Plains 14. and six situation for the Cavaliers. The ball are on their own 41 yard line as we head into the fourth and final quarter of the ball game. Trophy presentations will be made following the game for the outstanding offensive and defensive players as well as the team taking all the uh, special ball trophies. All right, McNeese, he's going to throw for it. He's looking, he slipped partially, and the ball broken up in there nicely by Max Struby for the Beavers, so it'll bring up a fourth and six situation. The ball deflected high into the air, and almost getting a shot at it for an interception was Jim Cox, but he couldn't quite stop his in his tracks fast enough. So Rosebud and Jeff Trost, or Steve, yes, Jeff Trost will drop back for the Beavers as Ferguson will be punting from about his own 30-yard line for the Cavaliers. Will the rush be on? Just a little bit, not too much. All right, the kick, a nice spiral kick. And taking it over there is Trost. He tries to get outside and can go nowhere. Is down there very fast for the Tom Brome for the Cavaliers to make the stop on Trost. Late in the game, Oklahoma 35, Nebraska 10. So the Sooners and the Cornhuskers will share the Big 8 Conference crown this year. So the Beavers will take over now, first and 10. Steve Knutson back into the lineup for Buena Vista, and he was running pretty well when he came back in there, so he evidently shook off the effects of that ankle. As the Beavers break out of it, Syro wide right, turn wide left. Knutson sets him down, and he's going to put it up. Quick like, looking, throwing, and it is caught or not. No, intended for Larry Stapleton, and he couldn't hold on as he was juggling it as he went out of bounds at the far side of the field. Bruin running in there for Steve Trost for the Beavers. Second and ten situation. Ohio State 17, Michigan 14 in the fourth period. And Knudsen sets him down again with Kafer directly behind him. He drops back again. He looks. He throws. That little screen intended for Kafer, but to no avail that time as the front four, Arnick, McDaniel, Schmidt, and Van Dyke were really coming for the Cavaliers. Third and 10 situation. The ball at about the 26 and a half yard line, make it the 27. Steve Trost back into the lineup. A 
as the Beavers would like to get uh, pick up a couple of first downs and chew up some of the time off the clock. One thing for sure, they don't uh, hesitate to put the ball in the air. All right, Arp over the ball. Knutson drops back. He goes on the delay to Trost, but he can't break it. Gets up over the 30 to about the 31. And in there to make the stop is Ferguson, along with Hall for the Cavaliers. So it'll bring up a fourth down situation and five for the Beavers as they'll have to kick the ball away. Pat George dropping back. Al Fitch will be doing the punting for Buena Vista. If ever he wanted to get his foot into one, as far as Beaver fans are concerned, right now is the time to do it. Snap, a good one. Rush on, and he gets the kick away. He comes off the side of his foot and fielded. Let's wait and see what happens. There's a, what have we got here? Well, we're just going to have to wait and see. There's Fitz on the punt. It looks like he doesn't have his mouthpiece in. That's the penalty. It, I'm not sure if they call it improper equipment or what, but he didn't have his mouthpiece in his mouth, and that's a five-yard penalty for the Beavers. Well, that doesn't help the situation any as far as Buena Vista fans are concerned. The referee uh, calling it almost before he got the kick away, so we'll try again. He'll get the ball away now from about his own 15-yard line. And he gets it away, a nice high kick coming down, and it takes a bounce and takes a Cavalier bounce and finally knocked down by John Guest for the Beavers at right about the midfield stripe. So, St. Mary of the Plains will put the ball in play at midfield, trying to uh, get back into the lead in this ball game if possible. In the first quarter, it was all St. Mary as they went ahead 14 to nothing. Buena Vista came back and tied it up in the second quarter, made it 14-14. And then in the third quarter, Kevin Akeley kicked a 37-yard field goal for the Beavers to put them on top 17 to 14, and that's the way things stand right now. First and 10, St. Mary's just shy of the midfield strike. And I think we could hazard a guess and say Mr. McNeese will put the ball in the air. Dan Brony wide right, George wide left. Here's the quick pitch coming out to Haslam. He's trying to get outside and run out of bounds nicely. John Rosebud and also Dennis Fay not giving him a chance to pick up too much yardage. He might have got a couple of yards. Let's see where they spot it. They give him about uh, three yards down to the 47 yard line of the Beavers where it'll be a second and seven situation. Owen Kane started to go in and then came back out of that Cavalier lineup. Second and seven, the situation. We've got plenty of time in the ball game. 13 minutes, 26 seconds. As McNeese drops back, he's gonna throw. He's looking for somebody. He throws one downfield. And up there to try and bat it away was Jim Cox. Now, whether he got a hand on it or not, I don't know because it looked like Pat George had a chance to peel it in but he couldn't find the handle. Okay, here's Mc McNeese, the quarterback, back to throw. Fakes once, gets it up in the air. Good play by Jim Cox coming in front. Didn't, I don't, can't tell if he hit the ball or not, but went in front of the receiver, obstructed his vision, and it's an incomplete pass. Third and seven, the situation now for the Cavaliers at the 47-yard line of the Beavers. As McNeese fakes the throw out there and rush on real hard, throws the ball short of the mark. They were going to try and throw the screen pass that time, putting the hard rush on Dennis Rouse for the Beavers. So it comes into a fourth down situation now. And Ferguson checks back into the Cavalier lineup. And the thing that really made that play work to no avail was Dennis Rouse of the Beavers that time as he really came storming in. And McNeese had to unload faster than he wanted to and was short of the mark with the screen pass intended for Pat George. So Ferguson will drop back to about his own 36-yard line, 37-yard line, get the kick away from around the 40 or the 41. Here's the snap, the rush. He gets the kick away. It's a short spiraling kick, rolls around, still rolling around, down around the 15-yard line, and it's going to roll dead at about the Beaver 15-yard line. Well, they'll take over first and 10 from their own 15 as the two squads defensively the Cavaliers move out there and offensively the Beavers do likewise. 13 minutes and five seconds left to go in the ball game. Lots of time for plenty of things to happen. It's 
All right, Knutson has turned wide to the right and throws to wide left. And he's going to throw from down there. Looks. Throws over. Oh, intercepted. Picked off. And running for pay dirt with it for the Cavaliers. We'll try and get his number. He ran doggone near out of the ballpark. Number 42, Roger Schmidt. He was laying in the weeds, waiting for that one. And the Cavaliers okay. go back on top. Here's the replay. Knutson goes back to pass. On first down, Knutson's throwing. And I really don't believe he saw, saw Schmidt there right in the middle. A good play. And it's just a race to the end zone. It's a touchdown. Cavaliers are back on front. Our score now, 20 to 17 in favor of St. Mary of the Plain. As Roy Brown gets in there and attempting the extra point, Sherhart. The kick is up in the air and the kick is good. And it's St. Mary of the Plain, 21, Buena Vista, 17. And here we go again. So the Beavers uh, wonder what happened that quick. All they know now is they trail by four in the ball game. And Sherhart will be doing the kicking off for the Cavaliers from his own 40 yard line with 12 minutes 48 seconds left to go in the ball game. Drocking back for the Beavers, Stulu, Trost, and Rosebud. Rosebud the man in the middle. Stulu on the near side and Trost on the far side as Sherhart will put the ball in the air for the Cavaliers. Good ball game, back and forth, the kind the fans enjoy. Of course, if your team's ahead, you enjoy it more. The kick, he falls down as he kicks it. It's a short kick, it's knocked around, picked up. In there is Bruin with it for the Beavers. He can't find his footing. He gets up over the 30 to about the 31 yard line before he is nailed in there. Okay, just to see how slippery it is on the field. Watch this kickoff. Number 63 takes a good swing at the ball, lands on his back. All right, Beavers first and 10 on their own 31 yard line now. About 69 yards away from pay dirt, in motion. Goes Steve Trost as Knutson drops back, throws it over the middle to Jeff Trost. He's got plenty of room, comes up to the midfield stripe where it'll be first and 10 be a Steve Trost correction. Takes the pass, going in motion was Jeff Trost. 20, a 19 yard pickup, first and 10 Beavers. Okay, for the first time in the game, the Beavers use Jeff Trost in motion. He goes outside and Steve Trost, his brother, curls back into the middle. Fine catch, good throw by Knutson. Harold Edwards finally putting the stop on Trost. Jim Caper with it this time for the Beavers. Picks up nine big yards, almost enough for the first down. Going over his own left tackle, opening up a nice old Jeff B. Jacobson and Dan Phillips for him that time. Awful close. They're going to have to measure it, I do believe, to see John Moses finally made the stop on him. But Jim Caper, I would hazard a guess, is over the 100-yard mark now in the ballgame rushing. He had 51 yards on 12 carries in the first half. And he's picked up some valuable yardage here in this second half. So as they bring the chains in, they're going to be about uh, 17 pebbles short, I would think. Uh, Dick Gutter, we haven't heard too much from you here in this second half. What about the, the Beaver situation right now? Bob, uh, it seems that the Buena Vista, it's a shame we're behind the score. Uh, they appear of, to have controlled the ball game for the most part. There's always a threat, of course, of those quick kids getting outside uh, that Hazeland, but uh, maybe they can get in there. They move the ball real well. All right, second down and short yardage, and the handoff goes straight ahead to Caver, and he carries about four guys with him to pick up the first down for the Beavers. Moses and McKee making the stop, but not until Caver had picked up more than enough for the first down, but let's wait and see if we got a penalty on the situation or what. They're talking things over down here. We're going to have to wait and see. They're bringing the ball way back. I have seen no indication as yet from the official as to what the holding called against the Beavers. So that brings the ball all the way back to the 49-yard line of the Cavaliers. It'll be second and 11. 
So once again, the Beavers snap out of it. Steve Crow split wide left, turn wide to the right. In motion goes Jeff Crow's. As Knudsen calls his signals, drops straight back. Got plenty of time. Throws it over the middle again. Good to Steve Trost, that same play that worked before, and they bring it down to about the 44-yard line of the Cavaliers. It'll be third and a long four, let's say third and five for the Beavers. Now the ball just shy of the 44-yard line Big as one. Rune, or correction, Syro, replacing Turn in the Beaver lineup on a third and five situation, a big third and five situation for them. They trail in the ball game 21 to 17. As Knutson sets them down, he turns, he fakes off to Caver, gives Caver, Caver running hard, look at him go, all the way down to the 25-yard line of the Cavaliers, and Jim Caver is really running like a wild bull out there now. Picking him up and laying him down as Knutson put the ball on his belly. I didn't know for sure whether he had it or not, and he did as he started to gamble for yardage and picked up the very big first down at the 25-yard line. All right, Arp up over the ball for the Beavers. They've got it first and 10. Here's Knudsen, he fakes, he cuts off to the right. He's bootlegging and running well and out of bounds at about the 19-yard line, or the 20 maybe they say, where he's forced out of bounds. So Steve Knudsen's ankle didn't seem to bother him any on that little canter. So it'll be a second and five situation now for the Beavers as we have 10 minutes and 33 seconds left in our ball game. Cyro replacing turn in the lineup for the Beavers. Our score, St. Mary's 21, Buena Vista 17. The Beavers on the move. Knudsen again. Gives the Cavers this time. Uh, they're waiting for him, but somehow he manages to spin away and still get two to three yards. Maybe uh, a couple of yards shy of the first down. Moses and Steve Schmidt making the stop for the Cavaliers. So it'll be a third and three situation, or a long two, whichever way you prefer. Jim Brune in there for Steve Trost for the Beavers. They break out of the huddle. Brune wide to the left, Cyro wide to the right. As Knudsen calls it. He gives the caver, he's got the big hole, he's got the first down, I do believe, inside the 15-yard line. And a quick hitter over his left side. Okay, this is Jim Kafer again carrying the ball. It's just, just a quick, quick dive play right over the offensive tackle. The offensive line's doing a good job for Buena Vista right now. And you just can't bring Kafer down without gaining two or three yards anytime. All right, Kafer picks up that all-important first down at the 13-yard line of the Cavaliers. John Moses making the stop on him, but not until he'd gotten that big first down. All right, Knutson. Sets him down. He fakes. He throws. He's looking for a man. He has a man over here. Touchdown. Steve Proust pulls it in for the Beavers right in the corner of the end zone. And Buena Vista goes back on top in the ballgame by a score of 23-21. Okay, this is Knutson. They've been moving the ball on the ground. He comes back, and Steve Trost just does a, a short little out pattern. He's in the end zone. It looked like the receiver might have fallen, but... That was a, a real good drive put on by the Beavers. They moved the ball in the air, and they moved it on the ground to take the lead again now. So we're back and forth again, and Egley with the all-important extra point kick here as Steve Trost will hold the ball. Snap good, the ball down, the kick in the air, and it is good. And it's Buena Vista, 24, St. Mary's of the Plain, 21. Well, everybody said it was going to be a wide open ball game, and that's what we've had here. Both teams have shown that they can come back and uh, not let too many things hamper them. So now the Beavers will be kicking off. Dick Utter, what about the situation now? Well, right now it looks pretty good. Uh, you know this kid's going to put the ball in the air. He throws real well for a team that isn't noted for their passing, and they still have that kid that can get outside in a hurry. But I, I think Buena Vista now is ready. That's the first touchdown been scored at that end of the field. And it is getting a little muddy out there in the middle right now. Well, right you are. And, of course, uh, I imagine Eggley learned something from Sherhart's last kickoff. He doesn't want to have the same thing happen to him. Deep is Pat George for the Cavaliers, standing on about his own three-yard line. As Eggley approaches the ball, gets the kick underway, a nice end-over-end -end kick. It's coming to the short man, however, picks it off. Martinez has the ball, and he is racked out of bounds in there by Rich Stulil. 
Rich, six foot, 182 pounds out of Pocahontas, Iowa. So the Cavaliers will take over at about their own 27 yard line, first and 10, with nine minutes, 26 seconds left in the ball game. All right, that's Haslam, and meeting him is Don McGrain, along with Max Struby for the Beavers. He comes across the 30-yard line, just shy of the 31. Pickup of about four, it'll be second and six for the Cavaliers. Exactly nine minutes left in our ball game. Buena Vista, 24, St. Mary, 21. with some good blocking finally gets run out of bound by John Rosebud but not until he had uh, did he get the first down we'll have to wait and see where they spot the ball going on those wide pitches as the referee Roy Piper calls an official's timeout for a measurement as they'll have to bring the chains clean across the field to see whether he got the necessary yardage for the first down still lots and lots of time left in this ball game for many many things to happen so I don't think that either coach is uh, resting too easy right now. They spot the ball, put the chains down, see where they are, and they're gonna be about a foot to two feet short of that first down. Of course, on the out-of-bounds play stops the clock. As they mark the ball, it will be a third and about two foot situation for the Cavaliers. And would you wanna bet that they won't put it in the air to try to cross people up? Waiting for the headlines when to get back into position as the umpire stands over the ball. Now we're set. He moves out of the way. Rusko goes down over the ball. McNeese calling the signals. He holds. He keeps himself, and he's hit by Max Struby and Keith Stribe right away. Now, whether he got it or not, we don't know. He didn't need that much, but they didn't give him too much running room. The referee says, yes, first and ten. Cavaliers. resting at about the 37 yard line of St. Mary. The Beaver defense talking it up. They've got Rouse, Basenius, Schmidt, Kirkhoff, and Fay along the front there. Struby and Stulo backing it up along with Brad Jones as McNeese chants him out. He gives on the quick pitch and in there quick this time, Dennis Rouse. He smelled that one and he really came in there and greeted Mr. Haslam for about a six-yard loss. Okay, this is a great individual effort by defensive end Dennis Rouse. He just beat his man and made the tackle before Haslam had a chance at, at all to get outside. Buena Vista had another injury on that play. Denny Rouse is a six-foot, 190-pound sophomore out of Charles City, Iowa. He made his presence known just then and there. All right, Ruska wants to check things over with McNeese to see what they're going to do second and roughly 16. As he tries to hand off, can't fumble on the ball. I believe the Beavers have it. I do believe Buena Vista recovered it. Yes, Keith Kirkhoff, number 64. Or Dennis Fay. Dennis Fay it was, came up with that loose football and a big break for the Beavers there as they'll take over first and 10 on about the 28-yard line of the Cavaliers. And that Beaver defense really rising to the occasion on two successive plays. As the offense gets back in there now, and they would like to put six more on the board. Of course, the Cavaliers are going to have something to say about that, too, if possible, as Knutson sets him down. And he faints, rolls out to his right, throws over here to the left. The pass intended for turn overshoots him, or rather Steve Trost. He threw it a little high and wide and out of bounds right there with him. There's a look at that defensive unit. Center for D4 over there, Dennis Fay, the guy that recovered that fumble. Denny Rouse that came up with the big play previous to that on Haslam as he tried to go wide to his right. And uh, there's somebody looking for a hot dog. Or is it a hot dog? No, that's just a plain old dog, I guess. All right, second and 10, Beavers. As Knutson faints again, rolls out to his right, looking, he isn't gonna get it away this time, he's smothered. As in there first is Van Dyke for the Cavaliers. 
Okay, this is Knutson. The Beavers are still putting the ball in the air. He drops back after the fake. His receivers just aren't open, and he just runs out of time. Tony Martinez was the guy that got in there on him real fast, so it'll go to a third and 15 situation now. Knutson lost his footing there a little bit. That's how he got injured in the third quarter, too, as he got hit and he lost his footing. All right, post wide left, Syro wide right. Third and 15 as Knutson drops straight back, has good protection, throws out to the left side, short of the mark, intended for Steve Trost. So we'll come up with a fourth and 15 situation. As the Beavers, after uh, getting the big break on the fumble recovery, can't cash in on it. And coming into the ball game will be Al Fitch to punt the ball away for the Beavers. Coach Jim Hirschberger over there saying, okay, okay, we'll get her done. As Fitch will drop back to about midfield and get the kick away from about the 45-yard line of the Cavaliers. Good snap from center. He gets his kick away, a high kick. Coming down, and they're looking for it. Let it bounce, and down it. Downing the ball down there for the Beavers was number 72, Jeff B. Jacobson, and the Cavaliers will put it in play from about their own 12, 11 or 12-yard line. Make it the 11-yard line. They're 89 yards away from pay dirt, and we have six minutes and 32 seconds to go in the ball game. So once again, the Beaver defense is gonna be called on to stop the offensive thrust of the Cavaliers. Mike McNee still in there at quarterback. Tom Arnick split wide to the left, Pat George wide to the right. And McNee gives on the handoff to Roy Brown. He ain't going nowhere. Coming in to really rack him up hard is number 42, Rich Tulil from Pocahontas, Iowa. Okay, here he is trying to get outside. And cornerback Rick Stoll just comes in and just makes a tremendous hit. And that's what he's been doing all day. Rick Stoll Tony is Martin coming up is tough there on now that. at quarterback for the Cavaliers. A second and 10 situation from their own 11 yard line. I don't know if they want to try to put the ball in the air. Of course, Martinez is not their passing quarterback, but uh, maybe they know something we don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Martinez can't come out now. He's going to throw. He drops back. He throws wide to the right. The Beaver defender fell down and picking the pass up. Pat George looks like he might have got enough for the first down. He did. Chuck Stetzel over there was the man that lost his footing on defense. Okay, this is receiver George working on Chuck Stetzel, who's just come into the game when Keith Strive was injured a minute ago. Looks like Chetzel, Stetzel fell down, but it's a good catch by George, and they pick up the first down. Strive was injured in the, in the last series that the Cavaliers had the ball, and Chuck Stetzel's now in there. All right, the ball just over the 25-yard line now for the Cavaliers. As Martinez puts him down, he faints. He turns this way, throws over this way, complete again, but hit immediately by John Rosebud catching the ball, Tom Brome. Picked up uh, about uh, maybe eight yards. Let's see where they spot it. Okay. It'll be a second and two situation. So Martinez. Here's the play again. Martinez dropping back, hit his receiver on it, just a regular out pattern. Rosebud's there to make the tackle, but catches made eight yards for the Cavaliers. Well, the passing game starting to work for the Cavaliers again now with Martinez in there calling the signals. We've got four minutes, 39 seconds to go in the ball game. Martinez sets him down. He drops straight back. He looks. He throws way over here. Man, wide open. Can't hold the ball. Let's see what they say. Was he out of bounds or inbounds? He was juggling the ball. Let's see. Do they say good or not? Good or not? Let's wait and see. They say yes, he did have possession. Okay, this is Martinez dropping back. He hits his receiver over there, he's wide open. He juggles the ball at first, and it, you just can't tell from the sideline if he was out when he caught it or not, but possession is the main factor. He must have had it. All right, first and 10 for the Cavaliers as they really got something going now at the 43-yard line of the Beavers. The offensive line for St. Mary's really giving Martinez good protection. All right, he drops straight back again. He's gonna throw some more. He slips, he throws long, long. And the ball is intercepted, I do believe. Let's see whose ball. Whose ball? We gotta wait and see. They're signaling. First and ten Beavers intercepted by Jim Cox for Buena Vista at the five-yard line. A big, big interception for Buena Vista as Cox had beautiful position and peeled it in. 
Okay, here's Martinez back to pass. He's throwing deep, but free safety Jim Cox is right there. Makes a good catch and just wrestles the ball away from the receiver. A big interception that stopped that drive. That was uh, Cox's ninth interception on the year. That set a record for the Buena Vista Ball Club this year with interceptions. He now has nine, including two today. All right, he never had a more important one now as the Beavers try to get out of a hole at the red. Knutson gives the ball off to Caver. He puts his head down, picks up about three tough yards out to about the eight-yard line where John Moses comes in there to make the stop for the Cavaliers. And, of course, now what the Beavers want to do if they possibly way. can is pick up a couple of first downs, grind out the yardage, and uh, run down that clock. We're down to the three-minute 50... 48 seconds now. Turn back into the Beaver lineup for Syro. Second and about seven. I don't know. They, I don't think they're going to put it up. Knudsen again gives off to Kafer. Kafer uh, might have got a couple up to about the uh, 10 yard line for he's finally ridden to the ground by Schmidt and Van Dyke that time for the Cavaliers. So we've got a third and five situation. Third and five for the Beavers as Brune comes charging into the lineup for Steve Trost for Buena Vista with the play from the side. <laughs> 